Well, hello everyone, and welcome once again to the Yorkshire Gamer Monthly War Games update. And here we have um, basically the only thing I've painted this month, uh, which is uh, May 16, 24, 32 figures, um, which is a bit slow for me, but um, it is the twerk in progress from the previous episode. And if we just zoom in a little bit, then you can see it is my Bande Nera pipe block, 28mm Perry miniatures. Um, most of the figures from the Mercenary box set and the rest of them are from the metal figures from the European Army's range. So slightly earlier than the period that these are designed for, but these are Italian figures and um, as I've discussed on the internet recently, um, there was, I, can't, I haven't got any pictures that would suggest that the Italians changed the style of their clothing around this time. Lance necks, yes. Swiss, definitely, from the very plain early uniforms at Fenorvo to the later more elaborate units uh, uniforms at Pavia, as they kind of take the style of the lance necks. Uh, but these lads are um, Italian mercenaries from the Giovanni de Medici Bande Nera. Now. These are my toy soldiers, and um, there's been a little bit of a to-do on the Tinto web net. Um, so what I just want to say about these guys is that um, the flags are from Pete's flags. Pete um, got the idea of these through Robbie Roddis uh, from uh, some work in a book called The Black Bands of Banding Era um, by Maurizio Affioli. Again, you know what my Italian's like. And it's a bit of a modern take on the Bande Nera. And quite rightly, in the very first chapter, he kind of says that Giovanni probably wasn't around when they were a, a Bande Nera. They were a Bande Nera, a black band in mourning of the loss of Giovanni, um, which is where these devil flags came from uh, because Giovanni de Medici was known as the little devil or the great devil uh, so that's uh, a little bit of history behind this my interpretation of the figures and the unit if you don't like it to be honest you can do one so there we go um, so um, I have put these uh, these are I've not even finished the unit these are four bases out of six bases of the pike and I'm just moving around so you're getting a different view while I'm chatting and um, they are Eight figures on a 60 by 50 base, which is kind of my standard for um, this period and uh, these types of troops. For Italian Wars, I will have eight figures for Pike, six figures for anything else, four figures for Shot. That's both Crossbow and uh, Harkaboos. So uh, we will drop the camera down and have a look at some of these in a little bit more detail. So as there isn't a lot to look at this week, I shall um, do a little bit more on these. Uh, so this is the first base that I put together. Uh, the flags, as I say, are from Pete's flags. Um, they're absolutely superb. Um, these sort of depictions of devils rolling the dice and, and swords, etc. are really, really nice. Now, I've gone for what I call a muted palette with these guys. Um, Grey, sorry, um, black, dark green, dark red, and uh, sort of a khaki stroke linen look for some of the, the units. Stripes, but again with the stripes I've muted the reds, etc., um, just to give them, um, as they're described in the in the book that I talked about earlier on, they give it. They're, they're described as being a mournful look, not black, but a mournful look, and that's what I've gone with these guys. So these are the back rank bases of uh, the unit, and with those, I tend to try and keep as many of the pike as I can upright, um, and we'll see why I do that in a moment. So here is the other rear rank base very pleased with the way these have come out the the really the figures on the perry benches look the business and um, i like these plastic figures especially because you can pose them really nicely and um i thought it would be a little bit boring with the 
the drab colours, but to be honest, I, I think it looks uh, the absolute business. Um, quite often you can see um, Renaissance pipe blocks and Renaissance units looking extremely bright, and I'm kind of going for the um, antidote to that with those. So again, back rank, uh, it's a different flag. Uh, the, the sheet that you get from Pete's has five flags on it, so I've used all of them. Um, and upright pike. Uh, and then we've got base three. And if you've been following me on Facebook, you'll have seen all these. Um, but this is a, just a chance to have a closer look and a little bit of a twirl anthia. Uh, now, these have got a couple of figures that are plastic and the rest are metal from the European Army's metal range uh, from Perry's. We've got those lovely, lovely flags again. These are slightly different shaped, um, but similar motifs on. And uh, flag per base, I, I find, is uh, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. A flag on a base of Italian walls keeps me happy. So this is uh, another base. And then the final base that I've finished off, um, I've had lots on this month with work and podcast, etc. So I've not really had the time that I would normally dedicate to painting. But I've got eight done, and that's pretty good. Um, really like the face on the trumpeter guy. So I just put my finger in front of it, that wasn't very clever. Um, another flag there, that's a plastic figure, that one. Uh, the inverted officer type, and that uh, guy at the back, you can see the pike wobbling in a very plasticky way. Um, that is the other plastic one. And uh, carried through the uniform in inverted commas detail all the way through um, little stri stripes here and there and uh, those mixed random colours but muted uh, to make them look a bit different so here, this is the uh, uniform sorry not the uniform the uh, the unit to date let's bring them all in to view so you've got an idea of what we've got to go on the table um so to add it to that um which you're going to see in twerk in progress i've got two bases with lowered pike and then four bases of shot to finish off but i just didn't get them done uh this month so it's not going to be a surprise for you but let's do twerk in progress So you can tell it's twerk in progress because the twerk in progress book box is out. Uh, so this is the box that I just keep my um, unit on the go in. And um, first off, we've got these guys and uh, bring them closer to the camera so you can see. And this is a the half, well, nearly finished base. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the camera down to have a look at this. I'll be back in a sec. So here we go, here we've got the uh, the next base, and this is base 5, and as you can see, there's a historically accurate uh, Bradford City uh, strip in action there. Uh, these guys, I've got the front rank here, all with lowered pike, and then this guy here is going to be a standard bearer. I've mixed an officer in there, and then we've got a couple of angled... Uh, pipe guys there. The base is uh, kind of three quarters finished. I've put the um, the dark earth down. I've got the base text down for the grass. That just needs all dry brushing and then tough sadding on. And then with these guys, the uh, pike are going to go on last because I can't do all this work around here with the pike on board. Whereas I'll put the pike on and base the other guys uh, with these I base them and then put the pike on so the base here as you can see um, is my standard base which is 60 by 50 and then I've just stuck a 60 by 60 on the end and that is purely to protect the um, pikes of the front ranks um, be lowered it's something I've done for many many years just to uh, to protect the figures um, so there is just one more base to paint and uh, those guys are in my little white box uh, and as you can see here uh, all I've done is um, put the base coat on the helmets the good old ubiquitous tinny tin 
which if you've not used it then why uh, it is the best paint ever um, so basically that is a, an undercoat for my silver and I'll use two or three layers of silver on top of that just to to bring it out but the the tinny tin gives the metal a warm look it gives a hint of an idea of rust in some areas as well uh, and it's just the best go-to um, base um, for metallics here's the the blank base uh, there we got a bit of advertising for guy bowers there um, I always stick my business cards on the bottom of here um, so that's the base as it's going to go figures on that bit and this is the overhang for the pike um, to go with these uh, in here I have uh, a unit of shot and um, with it being Bandanera, it, it's uh, Harkaboos, um, they were famous for their shot capability, uh, so I've gone with the plastics for these and these will be four bases of four. They can be used for many different things with the, with the block, they can be a skirmish unit, they can be sleeves of shot or they can be an independent unit of shot in themselves. So there we go, that is the twerk in progress, hopefully the entire pipe block and the shot will be done at least for next month uh, and uh, we'll see you then. How much have I spent? How much? Spent a bit more this month than I did last month um, as I start to build up my collection of figures for the 28mm Napoleonic pro project. And uh, first up is this box of Perry miniatures. Uh, pick this up. I picked um, two of these up actually, so I might as well get the second one out wherever that is. And uh, one I picked up at Partisan um, with the uh, the three box deal that Dave Thomas does at shows, and then the other one I picked up just at a random trip to the Halifax um, Modelers World. So I've got two of those, forty six figures in these. Um, they've got forty uh, Prussian infantry and eight of the um, Jaegers and uh, I thought I'd been diddled when I opened these up because I couldn't find the the Jaegers but they're actually on the on the sprue as a separate figure um, so I'll probably do a box review of these um, in due course um, but there's a couple of battalions and some spares uh, for the Prussian infantry I'll probably so I've got I'm going to have eight, 16 spare Prussians in there, so um, I might just make up the extra 32 with a couple of boxes of metals with those guys. Then, keep it on the uh, theme, uh, we've got one of the Napoleonic Infantry Battalions, 44 figures, which is perfect, 36 uh, for the battalion and 8 skirmishes, so uh, no changes required with those. Um, then I bought one of these um, as a bit of an experiment really just to see what I could do with them in terms of um, maybe some Italian guard, maybe some young guard. Um, I'll just look at the the way the figures work. Um, but it was worth buying a box of those anyway. If, if worse comes to the worst I'll just use them all as skirmishes. Um, but uh, potential with those 40 figures in that box. Um, and then finally from the Napoleonics, I bought these uh, French Line Lancers, the uh, Plants and War campaign. So Plants and War game, I'm building the Orbats for um, with the expended version. It fits in Subivir's Cavalry, uh, which is French Line Lancers, French Chasseurs of Cheval. I think there's some Hussars in there as well. Um, so bought these. Uh, I've got to say I've got my issues with them, um, but I'm going to put a separate um, video out around that. Um, they're perfectly good. There's just a couple of big problems I've got with them, but you'll find out what they are come the new video. Uh, so one box of those to come in a couple of weeks' time. And then finally, a bit of nostalgia, while I was wandering around the shop, I found this bad boy, HMS Fearless, which is one of the kits, uh, as it says there, vintage classics. One of the kits of my youth, and I just wanted to put one together uh, just as a bit of nostalgia. I'll put it as a waterline model, I'll stick it in one of my um, waterline bases, um, 
I'm sure you've all seen my uh, World War II stuff, but this is the kind of stuff that I do. That's Prince Eugen there. Um, so I'm going to do Fearless on one of these bases, uh, and I'm right looking forward to the nostalgia of doing that. So that's the purchases uh, for this month. Um, as I say, when I'm doing projects, and I've put a, recently put a uh, start to the Napoleonic Project video where I talked about these things in a little bit more detail, I like to build up my figures uh, before I dive into the project. So there we go. That is the how much for the month. No games played, sadly, because of I've been so busy at work. So let's go and have a look at scores up doors. Once again, it's time for Scores on the Door and a quick roundup of everything Yorkshire Gamer. Once again, thank you very much to everyone who listens to the channel or watches the channel or interacts with the channel. Very grateful to all of you. <coughs> Facebook is up 25 on the month, 2523. Twitter's up 16, 2909. Steady growth still on there. Uh, Insta, woo, lost seven followers. Uh, I need to do more uh, TikTok Morris dancing on there, quite clearly. Uh, YouTube's up 69, which is a fairly decent jump for me. Um, 2324. Podcast up 5, steady way as always. Uh, 347. Facebook group, massive. 285, um, up to 2310. And uh, I had a couple of big posts on there. I had a big rant about 3D designers and them spamming Facebook groups. Uh, that got quite a lot of follows. And uh, the figures you've seen earlier on the Italian War stuff got uh, a lot of interaction as well. So that's probably why uh, that uh, has gone up so much. <coughs> Podcast downloads, nearly up to 125,000 now. Uh, 124,498. Uh, big 6,150 over the month, which is rather a lot i have to say thank you again everyone listening to the podcast if you don't give them a go i'm sure you'll enjoy them the free and uh, great to listen to while you are driving in the car or painting some figures or running or doing whatever you do they are um hopefully a bit of war games radio as my mate sean clark calls them uh so 230 uh, blue sky up 27 on there again steady away but Decent interaction on Blue Sky, um, but I still think for me, Twitter is, uh, or X or whatever it's called this week, uh, it's always going to be Twitter, isn't it, at the end of the day, is the number one place to go. So, uh, I shall now uh, just do a quick review of uh, stuff that's been on Yorkshire Gamer on the YouTube channel and the podcast, um, just so you know where everything is. So over the press month, uh, there's been a couple of podcasts out, and the first one was with Phil Andrews and Martin Gain from the South London Warlords, and we had a good chat about uh, Salute and its history. Uh, it's been going for quite some time now in a number of venues, and then we had a good chat about the new show or the latest show that's coming up very soon in April in the EdXL in London. Then I moved on uh, to one of the historian style podcasts with Nigel Atta and we spoke about World War I in Mesopotamia and if you follow Yorkshire Gamer you'll know that this is one of my favourite periods of World War I history. Uh, I had a relative who was out there in, in World War I and we've done quite a lot of wargaming around this period so it was great to get a detailed uh, introduction from Nigel about the period and the wargaming. Then on the YouTube, I did a uh, beginning video uh, that will be the start of my 28mm Napoleonic project, and it went down very well. Lots of people uh, watched that. It was just really me going through what I'm planning, what figures I've got already, where I'm going to get my sort of inspiration and my information from when it comes to uniforms. I'm going really old school and um, I'm going to be putting a video out in a couple of weeks' time about elite miniatures and the young guard figures that I bought f bought from them, which are going to form the core of the first part of the units. So that's what has been going on at Yorkshire Gamer. So there we have it, yet another month done. It's uh, Easter weekend, and uh, next month we'll see the Jutland game going to Salute. 
and uh, hopefully I'll rattle through the rest of the Bande Nera pipe block and get that done. And then I think I'm probably going to do a 28mm Napoleonic unit. I'm probably going to do the Tyrolure next. So hopefully uh, they might be in work of progress next time I see you um, or talk to you. So thanks once again for tuning in. If you are at Salute, come and see us. We'll be on the little 32 by 8 foot table uh, in the middle of the floor near this stage. And come and say hello. I don't think we're going to get much gaming done during the day. Um, but the uh, the Jutland collection will be on display if you haven't seen it. So until next time, enjoy your way of gaming and city.